The following theorem characterizes for us equivalent statements to the uh, p being a prime number. So we have that p is prime. This is equivalent to saying that the equation ax equals 1 has a solution in z mod pz. And then this is equivalent to saying that whenever bc equals 0 in z mod pz, then b equals 0 or c equals 0. So let's prove this. We'll start by showing that the first condition implies the second. So this means we're going to start off by letting p be prime. And we want to first show that the equation ax equals 1 has a solution in z mod pz. So um, this is for any non-zero a. So let's pick one. So pick a not equal to 0 in z mod pz. Then since a is non-zero, a is not congruent to 0 mod p. So A is, so that means the congruence class of A. So that means A in particular is not an element of the congruence class of P. So P does not divide A. So consider the greatest common divisor between um, P and A. We know that P does not divide A, and whenever we have the GCD of a prime and some other factor, and some other number, we have two options. Either their greatest common divisor is one, or the prime is a factor of the other number. We just determined that P does not divide A, so we can't have this second case. So um, this implies that the greatest common divisor of P and A is equal to one. Now, by Bayesu's identity, we can write 1 as a linear combination of P and A. Okay, so that means that 1 is equal to AU plus PV for some integers U and V. Now, what do we have? Um, that implies that if we subtract 1 um, and bring the PV over, so we have that negative PV equals, and let me write this the other direction, then AU minus 1 equals negative PV equals P times negative V. So this tells us that AU is congruent to 1 mod p. Thus we have that the congruence class of AU is equal to the congruence class of 1 mod p. So we can say that A times U equals AU equals 1 so if we let x equal congruence class of u, um, we have a solution to the equation a times x equals 1. And because the a that we chose was arbitrary, this is all that we need to show. So now we want to show that if the equation ax equals 1 has a solution, then this implies that whenever bc is equal to 0, b is equal to 0, or c is equal to 0. So we're going to start by supposing that bc equals 0 in z mod pz. Note that if b is 0, then we have nothing to prove. So 
So suppose B is not equal to zero. What happens? Then because this is a non-zero element, um, then we have that the equation bx equals 1 has a solution. for some x in z mod pz. Then we get the following. We have that 0 is going to be equal to x times 0, and then 0 is equal to b times c, so we get x times bc. We can use associativity to rewrite this as x times b times c. We use commutivity to write this as bx times c. And then b times x equals 1. We show that this equation has a solution. Um, and so we know that bx equals 1. Um, but then we get 1 times c, which is just equal to c. So we show that either b equals 0 or c equals 0. So either b equals 0 or c equals 0. And that's what we wanted. So the final part of this proof involves saying that if we suppose that b times c equals 0 implies b equals 0 or c equals 0, then we want to show that implies that p is prime. So suppose, and actually I'll go ahead and start a new slide here. So suppose b and c are any integers so that p divides bc. Since p divides bc, we can say that bc is congruent to 0 mod p. And so we have the following. So we have the product BC is equal to BC, which is equal to 0 um, uh, mod P. So what this means, um, and so by assumption, uh, when we have B times C equaling 0, this implies that then B is equal to 0 or c is equal to 0. And so what does this mean? So this means that b is congruent to 0 mod p, or c is congruent to 0 mod p. Thus, p divides b, or p divides c. And so that's precisely what we need to say that p is prime.